So since absolutely nobody is talking about this bag, I'm going to. Hello, welcome, or welcome back to Classics with a Quirk, where we talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. This is the kind of content that you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. In a previous video, I revealed a Chanel seasonal flat bag from 21P that very few people were talking about. As of making this video, I'm still the only person who showcased it on YouTube as far as I know, and there's still very little out about it at all, and I'm baffled by this because it is such a good bag, especially for the price point. The bag that I am talking about is the Chanel Sweet Classic. I did get it confirmed that it was the Chanel Sweet Classic or the Sweet Classic Flap. And as you can see, there are quite a few similarities between this bag and the Chanel Classic Flap. This bag comes in three sizes. The Sweet Mini, which is very similar to the Chanel Mini Square. The Medium, which is pretty similar to the Chanel Medium Classic Flap and then the large, which has got a lot of similarities to the Chanel Jumbo. And from what I've seen so far, these bags come in a white, a navy, a teal green color, and a red. In this video, I'm going to go more in depth on this bag. I'm going to show you up close details, what fits, mod shots, the whole shebang. So stay tuned. So I changed the angle in order to show you more details about this week classic. First, I'm going to tell you the measurements, and I'm actually going to tell you two sets of measurements. Because this bag actually goes in fairly significantly on the sides, you have a lot less room inside the bag that you'd normally expect from a bag this size. So I'm going to tell you the outside dimensions as well as the inside dimensions. First, the outside measurements. The bag measures 9.75 inches across, it's 3 inches deep, and it's 6 inches high. On the inside, however, you have a lot less space. The capacity inside the bag is about 7.25 inches across, 2.5 inches wide, and five inches high. So you do lose a decent amount of space because of the ways the sides are shaped. This bag has four grommets, so you're able to wear it in a number of different ways. You can wear it short shoulder, long shoulder, and crossbody. And I'll go into that a little bit more in detail when I show you my mod shots. But just so you know, doubled up, the strap is 11.25 inches long, and single strap, it's 20.5 inches long. As a comparison, the walk strap is 24 inches long. So this strap drop is about three and a half inches shorter than the walk strap, so it does hit high up on the body so it would be a little bit more comfortable than the walk for a lot of people as i mentioned in my previous video this bag is very lightweight empty it's one pound two ounces or 505 grams this is significantly less than the double classic flap and that's in part because this is only a single flat bag now for the details You'll notice first off, of course, that this bag has this edge stitching all around the side of the bag, the back, and the bottom. Some classic flaps do come with edge detailing, some don't. The Real Shakin actually has a great video about why some bags come with edge stitching and some bags do not, so I'll link that video for you below. But in general, edge stitching versus not edge stitching is a preference. I actually prefer edge stitching, so the fact that this bag comes with edge stitching is only a plus for me. My bag, of course, comes in the beautiful navy, and this is in caviar. All these bags come in caviar. You'll notice that it is very glossy, it's got a wonderful sheen, and the quilts are very puffy. The caviar is a pretty good size. It's not the tiny little pebbly granules that some caviar has that often makes it look kind of matte or dull, and it's not really, really large granules either. I think this is a really nice size for caviar, but I will say this caviar is kind of flat. It still just has the caviar texture, and it does feel durable, but it does also feel a little bit thinner than some caviars. As a comparison, this is my Chanel Walk in caviar. And you'll see here that my Wax caviar are larger granules. They're both very shiny and they both have a lot of puff in the quilting, but the larger granules on my Wax do look a little bit more textured, if that makes any sense. And for those of you who would like to compare caviar for seasons, this Wax is a 2.9, while well, this bag is a 3.10. So as you can see, this bag comes in the aged gold hardware, not the shiny gold. And I think that that color really complements the dark navy. All the colors that this bag comes in comes with the aged gold hardware. So some people might not like the aged gold hardware with, say, the white or the red, but it doesn't come in any other hardware colors that I know of so far. On the CC of the turn lock, you'll notice that there's the Chanel and Paris stamping here. And on each four grommets, they have on the top 31 Rue Cambon Paris, and on the bottom it says Chanel. Now I will point out something that these grommets, you have Rue Cambon Paris on the top, Chanel on the bottom, Rue Cam Paris on top, Chanel on the bottom, and the same thing on this side, Rue Cambon on the top, Chanel on the bottom, Rue Cambon top, and the Chanel on the bottom. 
Somebody on the purse forum actually shared that when she got this bag, one of her grommets was upside down. So I would recommend in the event that you do find one of these bags or interested in buying it, check the grommets because if you have a grommet that's upside down, that is a serious quality issue unless you don't care. I want to show you some details on the chain now. So you'll see that this chain is actually thinner than the Chanel Classic flap chains, both the links and the leather interwoven. They're both thin. Again, in comparison to the walk, this is the walk chain versus the Sweet Classic chain. And you'll notice that they're fairly similar. In fact, the leather interwoven is approximately the same size. The walk chain, of course, is smaller than the classic flap chain. You'll notice here that the chain link on the Sweet Classic is thicker, the chain itself. An interesting construction detail about this bag is, as I mentioned before, it does go in fairly significantly on the sides. That's approximately an inch in depth here. And it also goes in a little bit at the bottom, but the bottom is flat. The base is flat. However, you've got this lip here from the edge stitching that's approximately, I want to say, maybe 0.25 inches. And this lip raises the bottom of the bag up. So when you set the bag down on something, you see the lip touches, but the base of the bag does not. And that's kind of nice because it does protect the bottom of your bag, but it does mean that the lip itself is much more prone to wear because it's just those edges that will be resting on something. And another person on the purse form actually expressed concern that this would wear very quickly. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now getting into the bag, the bag is a single flap. It is completely leather lined, which is an amazing detail for a seasonal flap. As some of you may know, seasonal pieces and often even Chanel classic pieces come fabric lined. The Chanel 19, for instance, is fabric lined. So you have the CC logo here stitched on the top and you don't have the Chanel stamp here at all. It's completely blank. The Chanel stamp is actually inside the bag underneath the zipper. There we go. And as you can see, my bag is made in France, which I personally think is neat. The bag is completely empty except for this one zipper pocket. The zipper pocket is leather lined, which is nice. And it is a plastic zipper, but the metal pull is the pretty classic Chanel metal zipper pull. And that's pretty much it. The inside isn't super exciting or detailed. It's just one hole in a zipper. You can see from just the shot that the sides again do go in significantly and that eats into a fair amount of space on the inside of the bag and that is a con that I will showcase in my what fits. Oh and I, I didn't mention this before but the inner flap is also in caviar. The inner lining is smooth leather. There is no pocket on the front or anything it's just plain puff with the turn lock. And then the back of the bag does have the classic Mona Lisa pocket. I had several of you ask me whether or not it came with the classic pocket in the back, and yes, it does. It is, you know, a small pocket. It's just the medium flap, so it's not really capable of fitting anything, but it's there. And you can see the edging does come along here too, and it also edges the back pocket, and quilts are super puffy. It's nice. One last thing I do want to point out on the make of this bag and this comes into play with the lightness of it, is that the bag itself is kind of thin. The leather is kind of thin. It is not as thick as classic bags, and that is, again, typical of seasonal bags. But you'll see here the flap is decent because it's double lined, especially with the edge stitching. But the sides, as you can see, are not super substantial. They are two very thin pieces of leather, and that could contribute to wear. You also can notice this detail about the edging being kind of sewed off here and here, which some people might not like. I, I have no preference, but it does add to how significantly the bag folds in. See that? Now I'm going to show you what fits inside this bag, but before I do, there is something I want to point out about the construction and make, which is a con in my opinion. If you'll see here, the bag's flap comes in very, very close to the top of the bag. 
there's basically no room between the top of the flap here and the bottom. So there's no leeway, which means that you actually can't fill this bag all the way to the top because if you do, it won't, it won't close. In yet another comparison to my wok, you'll see how high the flap comes over the wok. You can see through it how much room there is. See how high the wok flap is as opposed to the sweet classic flap. There's a lot more leeway to put things in the wok and still have it close as opposed to the sweet classic where if you fill it any way type of full, you'll have a very hard time getting the top flap to the turn lock and closing it. And now we're going to do the what fits portion and I'm going to start by saying that I really try not to overstuff my bags. I don't like the look of an overstuffed bag and it also can damage the leather by stretching it out and once leather is stretched out it cannot be unstretched. So I try my best to not overstuff my bags and to arrange my items inside them so they don't bulge out the sides or the bottom. This is kind of harder with this sort of bag because of how far in the sides come. I did mention that I'm thinking about getting an insert for this bag partially to help support it but also to protect the inside specifically because if I say have a hand sanitizer loose in this bag and it explodes that's irreparable damage, but if it explodes in a liner, I have more chance of salvaging everything inside. That being said, a liner would take up space inside this bag, and I, because it's a different dimension than the classics, I have to figure out where I, I'm going to go to get a custom liner to try it out. So the first thing that I want to fit inside any bag is my phone. I'm filming on my phone, but this is an iPhone 6S Plus. It is a ginormous phone. It has a huge case on it, so it's pretty similar to my phone. And that fits in like so. And you'll see that it doesn't fill the side of the bag. So you could conceivably use this part, but just wait. The next thing I'd want is my wallet. And for a bag of this size, I'd probably use my card holder. So that goes in right there. And then of course my keys. This is a Louis Vuitton key pouch. And you'll notice when I put my keys in, the clay and the card holder cannot stand side by side. I could stand them both up like this, and that should pose no problem, but we'll see. As some of you may be wondering, this is a Louis Vuitton mini pochette. Many of us use these as catch-alls for a hand lotion, hand sanitizer, a lip balm or lipstick, pen, all that sort of thing. Things that you don't want to be on the inside of your very expensive bag in the event that it explodes. Can this fit inside? So yes, the mini pochette can fit inside with my phone, a card holder, and my keys, but it's very full. And as I pointed out before, if it's very full and the front bulges out, you have a harder time closing it. So let's just see if I can. And it's a, it's a pretty big struggle. Like, look at that. I can barely get the turn lock to it. I can push it in. And it will close, it will close with all that stuff in it. And it doesn't even bulge out the sides too much. And the bottom is fine. So it does close all the way, but it was, as you could see, kind of a struggle. And I kind of had to pull the bottom up in order to get the turn lock to do that. And I don't really like doing that sort of thing. So it's up to you if you want to fill your bag that full, whether or not you'd be comfortable with literally kind of squeezing the bag up in order to get the top flap to meet the turn lock. So yeah, if I open it and I try to close it again, I have to really squeeze up to get it to close. And that will cause creasing, which may or may not matter to you. So if we take out the mini pochette, we still have a fair amount of room. If I didn't want to use a card holder, this is a Chanel snap card case. And so that can also go in here pack of tissues. But as you can see, these bulky items fill up the bag very fast. Now I still do have some room in here, so if I wanted to, and if I was brave enough, there's a hand sanitizer and a hand lotion and a lip balm. Those would all probably fit no problem inside, yeah, so could put all those inside the bag and loose and that would be okay. And it is a little bit of a struggle to close it that way as well. Because the thing is, the bulkier items 
when they push out the front of the bag and they stand up on top like that, it's harder for the flap to close all the way. See, look. So it's out that way and the flap doesn't easily come down because this part is pushing on it. So it's very hard. It doesn't naturally close. That's why you have to push up in order to reach it, which I don't like doing. So say your phone is inside, you still need your keys. You want to carry your hand sanitizer, your lip balm, your hand lotion, plenty of room left for a card holder. And you see that that fits a lot more comfortably inside. There's absolutely no problem with closing the bag because the things aren't tall and they're not too full pushing out the side. So that would fit a lot more comfortably in there but of course I don't really want a loose hand lotion or hand sanitizer inside my bag and this is where a liner would come in handy. So phone, keys, and say you couldn't use a card holder for some reason. This is a compact wallet and that does fit in but you'll notice that that kind of bulges out the front of this bag. So if I put the key pouch over here and sit it upright I would have no problems closing it but Anything that pushes out the front, making the bag thicker, makes it harder to close. So those three items are fine. And if, say, you wanted to carry the this stuff, they could go on top. But again, that means that they'd be loose in your bag. And instead of a compact wallet, Louis Vuitton Zippy coin purse, that goes in also just fine. And there is room for other stuff. So say you have a pack, or a pack of tissues in there, that's fine too. And that also closes and you've got some, you've got some space on top. But yeah, in general, it does look like a bigger bag, but I wouldn't want to overstuff it. And you really can't overstuff it. Otherwise it won't close. And that is a con. They really got rid of a lot of potential space and utilization by having these sides come in so much. It's I think it's for keeping the structure of the bag and actually because it's a single flap your people worry about this getting pointy you see like this but because of the way the flap comes down and how close it is to the bag it's a lot less likely to get pointy. It probably will get pointy over time especially if you use a lot and really pack it heavily but it's much more protected against doing so. And just from another angle you can see that if you did overstuff this bag and you had to pull up on the bottom to meet the turn lock this part here will probably be the first to crease and it would probably crease very quickly. I don't know how much that might matter to you if you don't care about a bag looking a little bit creased because you're using it or if you want to keep it absolutely pristine. But if you worry about creasing, you really do not want to overpack this bag because this will happen and then creasing will happen. And I don't really want to do that, especially at first. So for me, because I wouldn't want to overstuff this bag, but I would still want to protect the inside of it from carrying like hand sanitizer, what I would probably do is like before I'd put in my phone, my keys, my wallet, and I would put in a not stuffed mini pochette. And so that still gives me space here. And I can still close the bag without pushing up on the bottom. And no bulges on the side. And the bottom is also still flat. So that for me is a reasonable carry. Phone, keys, wallet, not stuffed mini pochette. And that removes the need for a liner while still protecting the inside of my bag by putting the spillables inside the mini pochette. It also means I don't have to play Tetris in order to locate my items, which is very annoying. And there we are, the sides are not too distorted and it is flat on the bottom. So that's a couple of examples of what fits. And now for some mod shots of a sweet classic worn on the body. Just for reference, I am 5'7 and approximately 135 pounds.
and crossbody. And you'll notice it sits about on my hip for me. This is it in comparison to the walk on how low it hangs. And I feel very silly. So I forgot to mention this in my up close details because I forgot about it, but something about the chain, and this is typical in some of the classic flaps too, is that the chain, when the leather strip on both sides end, they come into the chain here. And on the back, it's just kind of folded on itself and sewn. So it's, there you go. So it's a little bit thicker. So the pieces are just folded over on each other and then sewn down. So if you see this in one of the bags, it's not a flaw. It's just how it's finished off now. It doesn't look super neat, but it's just how it is. For those of you who are interested in the Sweet Classic, I wanted to show you the tag again, but I will say that you're not going to be able to use this information to search the website because the Sweet Classic is actually not on the Chanel website, any of the websites as far as I know. I only found out that this bag existed from Instagram and then going onto the purse forum, finding out a little bit more about it. A few people were talking about it in the 21P shopping thread, but aside from that, this bag basically has been mentioned online at all. I hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at the medium sweet classic or sweet classic flap. What do you think about this bag, especially now that I've shown you a little bit more about it? What are your thoughts and opinions on it? How do you feel about the cons that I mentioned? Please let me know if it's a bag you're considering or that you no longer want. If you like this video, please do give it a like because it super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content because it helps the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.